Classic Starts edition of Peter Pan, Chapter 13, Carried Off. Peter slept for a long time. Finally, he was awakened by a soft rapping at the door of his tree. When he opened his eyes, it was still dark, and he felt for his sword. Who is it? he asked. There was no answer, only another knock. I said, who is it? Still nothing, only silence. Peter was scared, but also excited. He loved adventures, especially ones that placed him in danger. His heart beat very fast. I won't open unless you speak, he said. Let me in, Peter, the visitor finally said in a softly bell-like voice. It was Tinkerbell. Peter quickly unlocked the door and she flew in. Her face flushed and her pretty dress stained with mud. Tinkerbell told Peter that Wendy and the boys had been captured and were now prisoners at the, on the pirate ship. I must save her, Peter cried, leaping to his, for his weapons. But first he would have a sip of water. Wendy had left by his bed. His hand reached for the glass. No, Tinkerbell cried, for she had heard Hook mutter about his trick as he sped through the forest. It is poisoned. What? How? By whom? Hook. Don't be silly. How could Hook have gotten down here? I don't know, but he did. Peter was stubborn and thirsty, so he raised his glass anyway. Tinkerbell flew quickly between his lips and the glass and took a sip of the water instead. Hey, that's my water, Peter protested. Tinkerbell did not answer. She was already spinning dizzily in the air, poisoned. Tank? Peter asked, suddenly afraid. You should have listened to me, Tinkerbell said weakly. Oh, Tank, why did you risk your life to save me, Peter asked. Her wings were weak, but she managed to land gracefully on Peter's shoulder and gave his nose one last loving pinch. She whispered in his ear, Because I love you, silly donkey. Then she flew weakly back to her little cave and collapsed on the bed. Peter knelt near Tinkerbell's limp body on, in distress. His head filled almost the entire space his head filled almost the entire space of her room. Tink's light was glowing darker. Peter knew she would die if, he, if it went out entirely. Oh, Tink, he cried. What could I do? I need you. Please don't leave me now. I think I could get well again if children believed in fairies, Tinkerbell gasped. But there were no children left in the cave. Tinkerbell... Peter stood up straight and screamed out for all of the children in the universe to all who might be dreaming about Neverland, boys and girls in their pajamas, safe in their beds, maybe even you. Do you believe, he cried, and his question rang th throughout the world. Tink sat up weakly in bed and listened, straining to hear her fate. She and Peter, though, they heard some voices, but they weren't sure. If you believe... Peter Pan tried next. Clap your hands. Don't let Tink die. This time they heard their answers. Many children clapping. A few naughty, nasty children hissed, but mostly they clapped. Until that is, the clapping suddenly stopped, having been hushed by worried mothers who had rushed into the bedrooms to find out what all the commotion was about. Nevertheless, that bit of clapping was enough. Tinkerbell was saved. Back to her old self, she didn't even think of thanking the children who believed, although she did want revenge on the few who had hissed. Now we must rescue Wendy, Peter vowed. Oh, if only some clapping will work that magic as well. Yes, yes, we must always think of Wendy, Tinkerbell said glumly. It was a cloudy night, not good weather for flying, so Peter pressed forward onto the ground in Indian fashion. He could not help but notice that the island was strangely quiet, as though it were still in shock from the recent battle. As Peter walked, he looked for things the boys might have dropped. He had trained them, if ever taken, to leave such clues. Slightly, for example, was to cut trees and Curly to drop seeds. Wendy knew to drop her handkerchief, but he saw nothing. He swore a terrible oath, hook or me this time. 